Today, we're going to be testing our gold jewelry with white vinegar. I will be using Allen's white vinegar, but any brand should work just fine. I will be placing these four gold chains in the substance. One of them is 18 karat gold, and the rest are either filled or plated. Take your guess right now on which chain is the real one. If you're curious, this is the 18 karat gold chain. I waited about an hour and rinsed the chains to check if the gold color had changed. Unfortunately, none seemed affected. I tried the test with a different gold plated chain and this one's color began to peel. In about 50 minutes after being placed in the vinegar. So to begin, what you wanna do is simply apply a little bit of toothpaste to the ring. So that should be enough. And what you want to do is then rub it onto the white cloth here for maybe like 30 seconds to a minute. That's what we're going to do here. What you're going to see there, you see that black spot it's created. The gold is still nice yellow and shiny. This is 14 karat, but it leaves that black mark. Now, if you were to use it with something that isn't gold, no mark would be left behind. So yeah, there you have it. Just a quick and dirty test you can do at home. Of course, the best thing you can do is do multiple methods for testing. Um, as the more that come out correct, you know, the higher chance you have of something being actual gold. And then, of course, if you really want a concrete answer, you should go find someone that has the equipment to test everything appropriately. And they can tell you exactly what you have. So, yeah, thanks for watching and subscribe if this was helpful. Test gold with a magnet. Similar to other metals such as silver or copper, gold isn't magnetic. Therefore, it won't stick to a magnet when placed up to it. Now, that doesn't mean that any regular magnet will work, such as this little timer I have here. It has a magnet in the back to attach to a fridge or something like that. This type of magnet is very weak, so I don't recommend using something like this. Rather, you need to get yourself some rare earth metal magnets, such as these ones. They come in circles, squares, these little cylinders I like to play around with. Something like this will be very good at detecting non-magnetic metals in jewelry. So what we're going to do here is just run it across all the pieces, see what sticks. After that, I'll tell you guys which ones are actually gold and which ones are not. Just so you see how effective the test is and to see if it will fit into your situation. Because everyone's different and everyone has different pieces. So let's get into it. We'll start from left to right, bottom to top. So starting out with this one, nothing. And I think we got a hit. Not crazy strong, but strong enough for me to move it without just tapping it. This guy, nothing. Well, that guy, definitely. Like I stood right up. This guy, nothing. This guy, instantly. And the chain in the back, nothing. Now, when it comes to testing chains with a magnet, you need to be careful with clasps as sometimes they'll have springs in them made out of other materials that won't be gold and these will stick to the magnet. This one in particular didn't, but most of the time they do. You can see the clasp right there. This one, it didn't stick to it. Now to go over, actually, let's try out the fridge magnet next. So let's just separate the ones that did stick to the magnet, which were these three right here. And let's try the fridge magnet on it. See how effective it is. Fridge magnet, just a good old cooking timer I have here. Sticks to it, but doesn't quite lift it too much. Now the ring, nothing on the ring. And this other ring, nothing on there either. 
just to see a back-to-back -back comparison real quick this is how it reacts to my strong magnets no it doesn't want to work <laughs> and sticks to it of course the stronger magnets you have the more you have of them the more effective the test is going to be just be careful with your hand with your fingers your skin when you're playing around with these as they are very strong and they could cause some real damage now you need to be careful with certain pieces here that aren't actually gold but still didn't stick to the magnet for example this ring right here marked in the back for 18 karat you can see it or if you'll take my word for it <laughs> so you can see we did another test right here turns out green this guy is mostly copper it's for the most part copper therefore it didn't stick to the magnet as copper isn't magnetic but it's still not gold so as you can see i'm gonna put lay out here all the stuff that isn't gold just so you see which one's stuck and which one's didn't. so we got these three that stuck we have this one that isn't gold that didn't stick we have this one right here which also isn't gold that didn't stick and we have this one that also is in gold and didn't stick now the two that are actual gold would be this 10 karat ring right here in old school and this 18 karat gold chain therefore like many of these home tests it is not 100 percent accurate and you should seek expert advice if you want to be 100 percent certain as this type of stuff requires better tools more expensive tools that most of us just simply don't have at home so you shouldn't solely rely on this to fully assert that something is gold or not. You can, of course, mix up different methods of testing, and that might be able to yield you better results, such as using acids. If we had used acids, right, on this one alone, I haven't tried it on these other two, but if we had tried acids on this one, now we would have taken out four of them, four of the potential eight, right? So my chances keep going up kind of thing. So that's what you want to try to do with these home tests. You're trying to eliminate as much as possible to see what's left. But a quick and dirty method if you're trying to test a lot of things is the magnet test. Just make sure you have a strong enough one and that'll be enough. I'll be putting out some other videos on different ways to test gold in case you're curious. In case you don't have access to rare earth magnets, you don't know where to get them. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description for something that looks pretty good. I don't remember where exactly I got these. I think I got them in a local hardware store. But that's the video. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Okay, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to test gold with lemon juice. Now, all you're going to need for this is going to be some lemon juice or some lemon juice just, you know, that already comes done. This is what I'll be using. I'll be showing you the results. You would need your piece of jewelry. In this case, I have a real gold ring and a fake one, as well as a container to put your juice. So I'll be dropping some of this lemon juice in there. And lastly, you will just need something to make a scratch or a mark, just enough so you can get, un you can get uh, beneath the surface layer to see what's really inside of it. Okay, now as far as for the marking, I suggest you do it somewhere that won't be too noticeable um, in case you still want to wear the jewelry. Of course, if you, if all you care about is knowing if it's real, you don't care about how it looks or any sort of thing like that, you could do it on the outside, but it's going to be noticeable. Now, if you do it in the inside of the ring, only you're going to know it's there. Okay, so to start off, let us pour some of the real lemon into the container here. I'm just going to pour enough so I can submerge both rings. Okay, it might actually be the entire thing. Well, I bought two just in case wasn't wasn't enough. And because that was the the deal going on, I have to save myself 50 cents. Almost there. Yeah, I might as well throw it all in there. Okay, all done. My lemon has been squeezed. Now, let's start doing a marking on this one. In this case, I have this round file I'll be using to do the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see too well right there, but it says 18 karat on this one. I'm going to intentionally make it bigger here than you have to. You really just need to get beneath the surface. Or in this case, you know what, I'm going to do it right on the outside so you guys can notice it. So we can see better how the test works. Check while you're doing it to see what you can see right here. I can see that there's a color change between where I filed and where it's still smooth from the finish. Okay, so we're gonna dip that one in there. And now we're gonna do it to the band here. We'll also do it on an edge. And we're gonna 
and dip that one in there. And let's just start that. Okay, I'm back. So it's been more than 10 minutes. Just got busy um, with some other stuff. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the gold rings and put them in some water. Let me just grab some water here to pour on the other side just so we can compare them. And we can remove the watch. Now, the of the rings, okay, now the purpose of using the two rings is to show the color difference. Um, that the lemon juice is supposed to, you know, produce. Um, now, genuine gold isn't supposed to change. It's supposed to stay the same. Um, keep. It's supposed to retain its yellow color. While fake gold, there's supposed to be a change, right? It all depends on what it's made out of. So let's take a look here. Let's see if anything looks different in there. So nothing here doesn't seem to be, and let's see if I can find the other one. It's like it got swallowed. Oh, there it is. And here is the genuine gold one, as you can see. Neither of them has changed. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave them in there for a little bit longer. I just need to go get some work done. And I will be back after to see how they turn out. Okay. So I'll try to keep a rough estimate of the time to let you guys know how much additional time I left it in there to get some, to see if we get any results really. Okay. Okay, so it's been about an hour, so let's just take a look, see if anything's changed here. So I don't know if you guys can see right there, but it has turned whiter. I don't know how much the camera catches it. Now, the longer you leave it, the more effective this will be. I could have also done a, a better job of really getting in there. There you go, so you can see. And we have the real gold one right here. Uh, if you can see it right there. No color change at all. This one's definitely had a higher color change. But even still, you could probably still leave it longer. Just gonna put in some water here. Now, this test kind of sucks. Not gonna lie to you. If you want something much more effective, now as you can see, it's not a very effective test. So let me show you guys what is way more effective than that. So we're simply gonna grab a our stone here. We're gonna place both items. And let's look for the mark. So we have the mark up here on this one that we did and over here for this one. And all we're simply going to do is we are going to pour some 14 carat testing acid on our piece. Let me just move them here so you guys can see better. And all we're going to do is pour a little drop over top of it instantly. Now look at that. One second and it's already effective. 
you guys can see the green on it. You gotta be careful with your hands so that it doesn't get on it. Or your fingers will start turning yellow or black. Uh, let me see if I have any. See right there, that's an old one from a couple weeks ago. But anyway, in conclusion, the test could work if you have enough time, if you have the time and the patience. But if you wanna avoid all of that, simply get something like this that will get the job done a lot easier and you guys can see it will do it right away for all of it really